Okay, fab. Welcome, everyone. And I believe that at the moment uh, I am the uh, main screen here. And so we are testing out something a little bit different this time, uh, which is our uh, basically um, Zoom live to see how this works. And I'm just uploading and redoing my screen so I can see if I can share my screen as well, which is the general idea. So I can see that we are, which is fabulous. So uh, welcome everyone who is here. We are doing this as a super special extra on the Entrepreneur 5.0 members group. So this is not like the one we did on Friday, which was out for everybody. This one is specifically just for people who are in our group. So it's gonna be a cozy affair, but one in which if you are watching right now, uh, click a like on the uh, video and basically post in here where you are in the world right now. And then that way we can see who else that we have who is on the call as well. Um, and, uh, uh, and basically, I am going to jump right in in a moment and share with you what we have been up to and what is going on within our Entrepreneur 5.0 launch. So big thank you to everyone who has been a part of the launch so far. Uh, I will also ask everyone who's been already watching the videos to just share down below whatever's been your biggest learning so far from the videos. We've had two days. We've got another three days that are coming up as well. Uh, you might be watching this live with us right now, which is awesome. So click a, a heart or a happy face if you are on right now. And if you are watching the recording of this later, well then, welcome. And obviously you're gonna get lots of good info on here as well. We're gonna make this a bit of a Q&A. So what I'm going to ask for everyone who's on here is to think if you had a question from the first couple of days, then what would you already be wanting to ask? Because why not, in the middle of this, as we're going through it, uh, give an opportunity for those of you who are already really thinking about how you want to be uh, playing this game. And I will come back to all of the comments as we go through as well. Let me share now my screen so I can uh, give you a bit of an overview of the things that we um, have been up to, uh, because I know we've got lots of people who have been going through uh, all of our videos. You'll see that on our group, which is where we are right now. Uh, we basically have got, uh, in fact, if I just refresh this, you will see that we are actually live as we go. So it's on here as well right now. And uh, here it is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you like some of the key things that we've been going through. Oh, look, there we are, we're live. Um, so good to see everyone. And uh, what we are going to, um, uh, go through is basically what's been happening over the last couple of days. So on Friday, we launched our very first day. You can click on any of these up above, by the way, and you can see day three already is here uh, because we launch it at five o'clock every day, Singapore time. So day one was all about insight. You can see down below all of the comments. We had 264 comments so far, some awesome comments. Here's Rosemary here. Uh, when we talk about how do you create your purpose, I get up every morning to inspire people to do what they love and love what they do for work so that their eyes sparkle and we can jointly change the energy in the world as energy is committed through our eyes, which is awesome. We had here Mike Brunt who was talking about the whole concept of ego side. Um, and I actually said, well, here's a really good blog on Bucky's ego side. So if you've already got to the second day, you know I tell this uh, story for the first time. I never told that story before. And there's this blog here, which is a really interesting blog where Bucky talks about this whole thing where he was wanting to commit suicide uh, and then how he went from there to basically realizing, hey, you know what, like I have something else I need to be doing right now. And so he actually killed his ego and he became the scientific guinea pig, right? So this link here is a really, really good link. I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna post it down on here as well. So you guys have got a comment on it. Um, yeah, let me see if I can add a comment. There's the link, all right, so there it is. Hey, good to see everyone here. All right, here we've got, we've got Akbar here. Hi from Kerala, uh, that's awesome. Carolyn, hi from New, Newport, Wales in the UK. Uh, so we've got different people already who are showing up here, which is awesome. This is all going live at the moment, which is really, really good. So I will come back to this as we go as well. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to see all the comments. I think I can as I start posting down here. I'm also going to ask Suraj as he sees any uh, questions to post them in my chat because that way I'll be able to see them really easily in case I kind of miss uh, your comments as they're coming through here as well. And uh, let me... Sure. Oh, watching this, right? Uh, and let me um, also share that if you have been watching the videos and you haven't actually been posting down here, go ahead and post because then you can see who else is on here as well as we're going through this. And uh, we also have the day two, which is on here as well, where I tell this story as we've just been mentioning. Um, and then we also have got the day three, which has just got going. 
which is like a super awesome day, which is about how do you now turn your impact into income? And what is the idea of a value cycle and how do you create that in the first place? And you'll see that un below here, these, each of these links, these actually take you also to all of these, which basically will give you not just the stories, not just the steps of what you are uh, in for over the five days, uh, but also you will see here um, that, you know, in terms of like what are the actual steps to go through, what's the exercises that we cover that we're going through this as well. When you download it, you can then fill in all of these elements and it's really, really worth it. I mean, it's one thing to listen to me talk about it. It's nothing when you actually do it. And I do all these exercises myself, right? So it gives you all the resources of what to go to and how to get to them as well. So day one, you know, day two is much more around impact. How do you actually create that impact? You'll see that we talk about Society 5.0 all the way through and we've got great stories. Here's a story of Paul and Masami. You know, Paul just actually mentioned about how he's uh, flying right now on his way to um, Vision Villas, uh, where he is mentoring our current iLab. Uh, and then we have like, not just um, amazing stories come out here, but actually templates of what we do and how we create our templates as well. So again, if you haven't watched these videos, highly recommend you do it. Uh, they are gonna be up during the period of these five days. And so do make sure that if you missed any of them, that you're going in and experiencing them as well. Uh, and day three, which is the one that's just coming up now, I tell some more stories, which you will hear all about and some really, really good learnings. If you've ever wondered where Wealth Dynamics comes from, I basically touch on the whole idea of where the Confucius family, the Eightfold Path of Buddha, the Bushido Code from the Samurai Code, all of these things all interlinked, right? Like we're living in magical times where we can actually really understand how do we go exponential using all of these different tools out there? What are the stories of other people that are actually going through this right now? And most importantly, how do you create a 5.0 enterprise, which is self-growing, self-improving with an automatic cash generating engine. And what does a cycle look like? Uh, even if you've been to one of our Entrepreneur 5.0 events, you're gonna see a whole bunch of new information in here, which is really, really super valuable at understanding how do you create an intermediate success scale? How do you actually then really turn that and link it into the impact meter? I won't give it all away. I think you get the idea. If you watch that, you'll get some really, really awesome uh, experience through the uh, not just the learning, but the exercises that we go through there as well. Okay, so that's the first thing. I just give you a bit of an overview that we are now on day three. So we're halfway through, or almost halfway through, once you watch the third video. And then we go into applying all this over the next two days, which is all about high touch, high tech, the whole new way that businesses are now growing. A uh, couple of other things that I want to share with you, because as well as us being in this really super awesome space right now, where we are going through all of this, and the reason we actually time this was because of the G20, right? Like basically, as you probably heard today, Donald Trump, King John Un, they just met up in the um, demilitarized zone. Uh, you know, the G20 just completed. Uh, and like we're here with the ability to go out there and do things that governments can't do, which is to take a global view on how we are able to create an entrepreneurial movement and to achieve the 17 United Nations global goals. The reason that the governments can't do that is that governments by their own nature have to be focusing at their own uh, uh, their own uh, country interests, their own national interests. Um, I still remember when I first joined the Clinton Global Initiative. Where, so some of you have seen the photo of me with Bill Clinton and where we got awarded a, a certificate for the work we're doing in the Hunger Project. And this was a good 10 years ago. And at that point, I was, I was really optimistic because he at that point had already left, uh, um, he was no longer the president, he already left office. And he was bringing together all these entrepreneurs. So that's where I met Larry Page from Google. That's where I met the guys that set up YouTube, uh, you know, Chad Hurley and Steve Chen. And it was just the most amazing time where you were, you were meeting celebrities, right? That's, that's where I met up with Shakira. And, and they were all humanitarians making a difference, which was amazing. And so I was like super excited about the fact that we were bringing together the top charities with the top entrepreneurs. But then what happened was that he came out to Hong Kong for a Hong Kong Asian Clinton Global Initiative. It was the one and only one ever. And I showed up there as well. And I thought this is going to be like incredible that we're now bringing this into Asia as well. Uh, and that was when his wife, Hillary Clinton, was the Secretary of State or about to become the Secretary of State. Like Obama was just getting into office. And so, and so it was, it was 10 years ago. And so at that point, at that point when, when he got on stage, he says, hey, my, my vision was that I would be able to really grow the Clinton Global Initiative globally. So we'd be able to connect all of the charities to collect all of uh, the entrepreneurs. He says, but unfortunately, we have to stop it. And the reason we have to stop it is that the American government have said that it's a conflict of interest, that if we have like, you know, national governments that are getting involved in what we're doing, uh, then it's too easy for there to be a conflict of interest. And because my wife is going to become the Secretary of State, 
uh, then I can no longer do this. And it was like, for me, it was heartbreaking. It was like, hey, here was an opportunity to actually create a platform and a community where we all could connect with each other. And then poof, it was gone. Well, the good news is we're doing it now, right? So like, this is where it gets super, super exciting is that over these five days, we're getting all the tools that allow us to be able to really move forward. And there's actually more than the five days. There's something else uh, which is our little Easter egg in today's video, third video, which I'm gonna share with you a little bit later uh, because that's where we now s unlock the key to what we do over the next six months, right? So I'm gonna kind of share that. So stay tuned for that as we go. Um, and what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna come over to all of the comments uh, and see what everyone has been uh, posting as we go as well. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can link this. I'm just gonna come over oh, to all of the comments uh, and see what everyone has. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I can actually see everyone's, here's this, I'll tell you what I'm looking at right now, right? So what I'm looking at right now is I just clicked on the, on the actual picture itself and I can see everyone with their live comments now, right? So I can see, here's Marta, hello from Poland. Here's Donna, hi from Brisbane. Here's Jeff, hi from Los Angeles. Here's Michelle, hi from Northwestern UK. So we got Dubai on. So my apologies to America. You guys are in the middle of the night right now. Here's Marissa from the Netherlands. But like you, Bea, everyone's, everyone's here. It's awesome, right? And from all different countries, which is really, really awesome. Slovakia, Croatia, uh, and so on. We have everyone here, which is fabulous. So uh, welcome everyone to the call. Here's Emma from Brisbane. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of share that as we are going through uh, this part here, um, that in terms of any of you that have thoughts, questions, uh, now's a really good time to post some of them down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just share some of the comments that were already coming through on the notes here. So we can kind of see them as we were going through here as well. Because there were a number of different people who had like, you know, some comments or questions, which I thought were really, really, um, you know, like, like telling. And at the same time, I want to share them as well. So here's one. This is from Donnie Nichols. So she had a question, which was, okay, in day two, Roger talks about mission statement and the 17 SDGs and how every morning one wakes up to. And my question is, how would a media company like Disney or Marvel Entertainment fit into this equation? Which of the 17 goals would a Disney champion going forward? Uh, well, and I actually answered, right? Like this is the first thing. If you actually see what these companies out there are doing. Everyone is getting much, much more conscious right now. And so this is what Disney and what Walt Disney actually does uh, that links to their giving. And this here is this whole concept. They have this thing called Disney Team of Heroes, where the whole idea is $100 million that they're putting towards are reimagining how children, especially terminally ill children, go through the whole process of their experience in life through having to live in a hospital. Um, and it actually started with Walt Disney. So he actually started this a long time back. And then they have the whole wish granting where they have like make a wish. They partner with all of these other um, different charities out there. But they're actually now also partnering with those hospitals. So they've actually got heart heroes, uh, pilot hospitals. And you can see how they do it and how much they're giving as they go, right? Book donations as well. So like, we, we have gone past the day where companies were doing what they're doing just for profit. It's now about doing well and doing good at the same time, doing purpose and profit at the same time. Marvel was actually bought over by Disney about six years ago. And what Disney did once they bought Marvel was they did the same thing. They said, well, let's actually create a whole Marvel branded um, charity, which is this one here, which is basically called uh, Marvel The Universe Unites, where they're linked again to charities like Make-A-Wish, Starlight, uh, give kids the world, which are three different charities that all are supporting kids with like amazing experiences. Um, and uh, these are ill kids that are you know, limited in the time they've got left. And it's basically another great, great, great initiative that you can see that has been, um, you know, at the core of what they're doing to bring purpose and profit together. So just knowing that these companies are out there doing these amazing things, I think is just fantastic. And I think that's like a really, really good way to be thinking about it as you go as well. Um, I, I want to like just point out some things as well. Here's Arcana here who says, I'm in the crossroads now. My business crashed two years ago. Was foolish enough to take all my loans to keep going. Today I have to um, do much, uh, uh, feel much of my property and jewelry that I had kept for my daughter. Uh, just to know, I just need to know what to do. So, and then, and, and I really don't know what to do. How do I pay these loans back? What about my daughter, her education, marriage? So I want to say something to people like Arcana, and if you've read, if you if you watch the second video, um, you know in that second video when I am talking about my story that there is this illusion, uh, this illusion that we have uh, of physical things that we actually think somehow that wealth is to do with our physical things. And of course, if you have that illusion, well then you're in big trouble because the problem with that is it means you're going to constantly, the moment you have more physical things, 
you're going to then have them as an anchor around you. You're going to be worried about losing those things. So the fear of loss will stop you from taking bigger risks. And, and, and a risk isn't even necessarily a risk, which means you're going to lose things. A risk is just you going out of your comfort zone to try new things where it's like, oh no, but I can't because I'm in my comfort zone right now and I've got these things already and I've got to hold on to them. But if you really think about what's possible in the next 10 years, imagine if whatever you have right now is less than 1% of what you actually could have. So it means you're willing to give up 99% for just the 1%. I mean, think about it. If, if you're whatever, like what is the difference of 1% and 100%? Take whatever you're earning right now and add two zeros. So if you're earning $1,000 a month, then add two zeros and make that $100,000 a month. If you're earning $10,000 a month, then add two zeros and make that now a million dollars a month. And just ask yourself, maybe not today or tomorrow, but in the next 10 years, given that there's lots of other people out there who've actually managed to add a few zeros to what they're doing, if you were to add those two zeros in, do you think that's possible? Do you think that you could be earning 100 times what you're earning at the moment? Now, do the same thing at impact. Think about how many people you're currently impacting on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe every month, is it what, 10 people, 20? Like how many customers do you have? How many people, as a result of your business, are you impacting? Maybe it's 100 people. Maybe it's 1,000 people. Whatever that number is, add two zeros. So if that number's 10, add two zeros, now you've got 1,000. Is it possible, can you imagine yourself, that you could actually be impacting 100 times the number of people? If, you're, if you've got a big business right now, if you're impacting like already 1,000 people a month, could it be 100,000? Just ask yourself that question. If you think, actually, it could be. It could be 100 times that amount. And by the way, in 10 years, you actually don't need to double it that many times to get to 100 times the result. That's the power of this. You know, if you double something up, then you get to 10 times within two and a half years. You get to 100 times within 10 years. So, so that means that there's 99%. If you're going to go 100 times, there's 99% that's not even done yet and you're worried about holding on to the 1%. So the reason that this is so important is for someone like, okay, now he could look at it and go, geez, I, like, I owe this money, I've got, I've got all this, this debt. Um, the most important thing is not how much you owe or, or what you don't have. What's most important is, are you going positive? Is there a way for you to actually go positive and then to start increasing that flow and increasing that flow? And if the answer is yes, then you're gonna find that there is 100% a way that not only in a year can you clear that debt and be out of it, uh, but that you actually now free yourself up to be the person that you're meant to be. So I do want to mention that because I think it's super duper important. Um, I'm going to also, uh, I'm just going to do a quick check here on our chat, right? Because I know that Suraj has actually been posting a little bit as well. So um, Suraj has posted this. He said, um, uh, Louisa and Natasha Parker says, do you believe it is possible that we are able um, to have a partnership with number 16 uh, based on the failures of institutions and organizations, right? So like number 16 is partnership for the goals, right? Like, ha like is it possible to make that happen? Um, and uh, here's, what, here's what I'm going to share. Um, if you go back to 1848, 1848 was something called the Spring of Nations. So what happened in 1848 was really the very, very beginning of the French Revolution. Uh, there was European revolutions all over Europe. Uh, it also was basically during the 1800s that America went through the same thing as well, Declaration of Independence. So monarchies were what were really like controlling most of the countries uh, before 1848. And then the Spring of Nations was, the, was this whole spring of democracy where everything got switched and changed and suddenly you had these democracies that didn't exist before and, and the whole system got reorganized. Uh, we can feel the same thing happening right now. There's this friction that's happening where the old ways of doing things, you know, the ways that right now uh, people are already pushing against governments, right? The fact that we actually don't even trust governments the same way. Uh, there was an Edelman report, which was about uh, how much do we trust our current governments? And millennials trust their governments like less than 15%, which is massive, right? There's gonna be one in eight people trust the government, the other seven don't trust it. So, so when that's happening, you know there's gonna be big shifts that are gonna take place. Uh, there's uh, a really great uh, analogy uh, that a number of different people have used. I think Deepak Chopra was one of the first to use it, where he talked about the butterfly uh, and how a butterfly gets created. And he basically talks about it from a biological point of view. Uh, another person is Bruce Lipton, who is a biologist, who also talks about the same thing, where, where what actually happens in a caterpillar is as a caterpillar like, starts getting hungry, it just starts munching and munching and munching, it just overconsumes. And there's no question in the last 10, 20 years, we have gone through overconsumption as an entire humanity. 
which is why we've got all the environmental challenges. It's why we've got all the challenges with governments, which massively inflated what they've done and actually been printing money like crazy. And so because there's this massive overconsumption that happens, just like in a caterpillar, it gets to a point where it's almost ready to burst. And then at that point, what happens to the caterpillar is it just kind of falls asleep. It's, <laughs> it's just like, whoop. And, then, and as it falls asleep, what happens is it actually creates around itself before it actually goes into a deep sleep, a chrysalis. And, and it's almost like restricting itself when it does that, just in the same way that we're feeling this in the world today, where there's this restriction that's happening, where we're all trying to push against it or create new wars. And so as that's happening, then something magical happens inside the cells. And there's something which scientists actually have called imaginal cells. So they're called imaginal cells, which are cells that were in the caterpillar all along, but they were just sleeping. And now they wake up. And those imaginal cells, they start basically going through and meeting all the other cells and basically unlocking them and turning them into like this big, massive soup. So now you've got the caterpillar, which has gone from a caterpillar into this big soup. And every one of those imaginal cells is linking to all the other cells and it's telling them to just switch, just to change. And most of the cells have no idea what they're changing to. So there could be one, one cell, which used to be part of the caterpillar's leg. And now it's becoming part of the, uh, and part of the, part of the butterfly's wing. Uh, you might have another cell, which was part of the you know, caterpillar's uh, stomach, right? And now it's actually becoming part of the, of the butterfly's antenna. And each one of these has no idea what it's gonna become and doesn't even know that there's gonna be a butterfly that's gonna show up. But out of all this magic, what happens is this reorganization, which then ends up, suddenly with this entire butterfly getting created. And that is this whole idea of metamorphosis, right? So metamorphosis, which is not about, you know, formation is about how do you measure change? Transformation is about how do you change your measure? So, so most of us, what we're doing is we're measuring our change and going the change doesn't feel right. Whereas changing your measure is like, hey, we shouldn't be measuring profit. We should be measuring purpose. We shouldn't be measuring just in terms of like how hard we're working. We should be measuring in terms of what fulfillment we're receiving. Like we shouldn't be measuring what we're getting. We should be measuring what we're giving. So this is about these shifts and measures that are happening. That's what's happening in the world game. That's what a ready organization like B1G1 do in terms of giving impacts, which I'm about to share in a moment. And so super important to think of it in that way that don't worry about what was the old way of doing things. Uh, this is something, you know, if you go back to the late 1900s, there was this whole thing called the Great Horse Manure Crisis, where the, the, all the big governments in the world got together because they were in crisis about the fact there was all this horse manure in London and in New York, and they actually estimated that if this continued, there's going to be seven feet of horse manure within 20 years. And so they're like, how are we going to sort this out? And while they're trying to figure this out, People like Mercedes Benz, people like you know, Henry Ford, they were already thinking about the automobile. And of course, 20 years later, they didn't have any of that problem because the horses weren't on the streets anymore. So don't worry about the old. As uh, Lynn Twist says, she goes, uh, don't worry about fighting the old. Just hospice the dying. Like, they're going to die anyway. Hospice the dying. Like Give them care and attention and go, well, thank you for being here. But no, they're going to be gone. And as a result, we should be creating the new. And so I want to share that because you may right now be in a confusion with your life. You may be in confusion about your business. The whole point of it is that you may be just one of those cells or maybe even the imaginable cells themselves. And as a result, you switch and then suddenly before you know, there's this new butterfly. That's the transformation we're going through as a entire humanity right now, I believe. And that's why when I talk about society 5.0 and then I talk about entrepreneur 5.0, the end point of that, as you heard me already say in the first two videos, is the whole concept of humanity 5.0. Um, now, by the way, I really believe that you have a choice whether you're going to be one of those cells waiting to be woken up or whether you become one of the imaginable cells doing the waking up. And what I'm about to share with you is well, like the citizenship, the mentorship, what we're doing over the next six months and over the next 10 years to actually be the imaginable cells, to be the ones we've been waiting for, right? So I'm going to get to that in a second. But I'm going to get another question here, right? Which is, um, uh, this is from uh, um, Koshal who says, greetings from India. I'm a final year engineering student. So welcome. I know we have a lot of students uh, online as well. So it's fantastic to see you here. I've started my own brand and setting uh, water bottles uh, and going to add more items and I want to grow my sales. Suggestions, please, what should I do? So the most important thing when you're getting started is to know that your number one currency is not money. Your number one currency is knowledge and connections. There are three different types of capital which makes up all wealth. The top one, if you think of this like an iceberg where the, the two push it above water, you see the top one is called financial capital. That's your money. But financial capital is limited, right? And it's only going to show up if you push the other two up. Someone like Mark Zuckerberg didn't start with anything. Now he's actually built himself into a billionaire. Jeff Bezos did the same thing. But they didn't focus on the money. They focused on the other two that pushed it up. The other two are what? One of them is not called financial capital. It's called intellectual capital, which is what you know. And then the other one is called social capital, which is who you know 
what you know and who you know is much more valuable than the money that you have. And if you start thinking every day, all I need to do to grow what I know and who I know is to basically just invest my time and I can turn my time into those things. And we have the same amount of time as Richard Branson. We've got the same 24 hours of time every day and they're golden drops. So if we just actually allow ourselves to lift those up, then the whole thing lifts up as well. So my advice to you is to make sure that what you do is you, first of all, use all the tools that are on here. You come onto Genius U, you connect with others as well. Water, like, you know, in terms of water for everyone, that is one of the United Nations global goals. Go to the purpose circle on water and actually connect with everyone on there, right? And then you'll, you know, let me show you exactly how you do that, right? I'm just gonna share my screen for a second. If I go um, and I go onto Genius U, right? Which basically is, here we go. Let me just have a look here. Here's Genius U. And if I just go on to Genius U, uh, I'm going to come back in a moment just to wrap up, guys. So just so you know, I'm going to be maybe another five, 10 minutes. I said 30 minutes, but I think we're going to go a little bit over, but not too much over, right? So um, here is so here I am, and this is Genius U. You've all gotten access to it already. Um, when I do the purpose test, I can find all the other streams as well. And you can see like here, I can kind of like, you know, so if, I, if I'm interested in water, I can just type in water, right? And just see what shows up. You can see, look at this. Here is the actual purpose circle on water, clean water and sanitation. So if you were to go to this link here, and this is one of the United Nations Global Goals, uh, then you can see here, clean water sanitation. There's 275 members all around the world that are already connected to this being their number one. You can see people are posting down here all about like water, like clean drinking water for 2,200 people. You know, there's documentaries that you can watch on water, saving lives, right? These different people all posting this in here as well. Different people commenting in here already. And then if you actually want to go look at the members, right? I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm joined this one, right? But if I did, right? And I actually want to be part of this, you can then link into all the other people that have got water as their number one. And the real power of this is that once you're in here and you're actually now connecting with the other people that are actually in here as well, look at something like Robert, right? So Robert's here, he's like posting, uh, you know, it's like showing up here. So he's obviously interested in water as well. You can see different people, what's their number one thing. His is education here. So you can see there's the education one, right? But as you actually connect to other people in other areas and you find the people that are actually fine, like, you know, if I, if I go, for example, uh, you know, back to my community and I look at all the people, right, who are, let's say, for example, mentors. And now I'm looking at people who are like interested um, in uh, mentoring other people, right? So they're all on here as well. And I can filter and sort. And there's all these, here's Terry, who's here from Australia. Here's Peter in the UK. Here's Catherine in Australia, Michelle in the UK, like different people in all different countries, Syed from Pakistan. And so I can go here and say, well, like, is there anyone here who's got like, you know, clean water and sanitation as their, as their number one? Maybe there is, maybe it's not, right? But basically here they are, right? So here's Angie, mental ranking, number one in, in water, in Australia. You can see clear water and sanitation. So you've got people already up here that you can actually then connect up with. That this person here, Angie, She's passion test facilitator, passion test for business facilitator, national director, and she's got water as a number one thing. So you're now connecting to the right people. You get the idea, right? It's really, really super valuable once you get connected to the right people in the right way. Um, okay, we've got a few more questions, right? So we're gonna continue on some of the questions because uh, anyone who wants to jump, well, you can, but I wanna make sure that I'm covering these questions as well. So I'm gonna cover more of these questions as I go. Before I do, uh, answer more of the questions, and if, if this goes on for longer, I'm fine with that. It's a Sunday, why don't we actually spend some time together and get all the questions answered, right? So, um, but before I do that, I do want to share something else which is happening uh, today, which I think you'll find really exciting, which is that within the uh, accelerator, you'll see that when you're watching the video, it goes for maybe- what we have uh, planned, and I really hope that you- uh, This goes for maybe uh, 50 minutes or so, like the other ones. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, not this one here, this one here. Um, let me get it. Yeah, this one here, it goes for about 50 minutes. This is the day three, which has just gone live. If you're curious as to what we're doing in addition to our five-day program, because we've still got two more days, and you can just come and do the five days, but I would highly recommend that you listen in after the 55 minutes because there's another 20 minutes here where I'm sharing all about something which is uh, launching for the first time, uh, and it's this thing here, which is our 2020 Ready Accelerator. So what is this? This basically... And this link, by the way, we'll give you this link as well. But this basically is a way for everyone who's really getting value out of this five days to come and join us for another seven days where I'm going to be going through a workshop on the actual uh, Genius U platform where we're going to be taking a smaller group. Because we've got like, what, like, like between 18 to 20,000 people now that are in the uh, actual you know, entire, uh, um, entire five-day free course. But we're going to go and do this together where we're actually going to end up with a six-month plan 
from now to the end of the year. Uh, and we're also at the same time going to be creating the memberships where we get our own member card. Uh, and then we're also gonna have vouchers we're gonna be giving out. Let me show you what this looks like um, overall in detail, right? Like this one here, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail so you can come look at this for yourself. But the whole idea of a genius, genius citizen, think of it like you're a global citizen on planet Earth where you're actually gonna have your own passport, you're gonna have your own uh, handbook to planet Earth, uh, and then at the same time, we're gonna make sure that we are the imaginal cells that are able to go out there and actually really uh, drive forward this movement. So I've got the seven day worldwide workshop that I'm gonna to continue to run. So I don't stop after five days. I just take it from these five day free course and we go on to Genius U for seven days. And you'll see here, we're gonna create our vision on the first day. We're gonna define our customer on the second day, assemble the team. So we've got a whole team that's gonna be helping on this so you can get all your questions answered to get a six month plan together set your objectives, price your products, create your pathway, and then take action. Like, so between now and the end of the year, you're already moving through the things that you're doing. And then we're gonna launch the world game on the 12th of July, uh, which is uh, really just after this finishes. This finishes on the 10th, and then we start on the 12th. So the whole thing's timed out for the year. I'm gonna be doing six months training and video series that you're gonna get as well part of this as well. Uh, plus, we're gonna give you the membership, uh, Genius Citizen, Genius Card, the Genius Citizen, by the way, looks super awesome. Like, let me show you what my card looks like. If I go to uh, my dashboard, which is here, uh, and some of you are just new to this, do know that here is where you're gonna find people by purpose, just like I showed you, find people by passion. But if I'm here, I can go to my Genius card, and I'm, I've got over $10,000 worth of perks and discounts. So here's my Genius card, here it is. I'm number 33, and here's my card, and I've got already my Genius dollars, and I can already go and just get stuff free and I can also basically get discounts of all sorts of things on here as well from all of our different mentors, which is just amazing. So this allows like $10,000 worth of things that you can just use and just like just get free stuff for everything. So uh, this all comes with part of this whole program that we're doing as well. Uh, and then uh, again, I just want to just give you a bit of, I'm obviously very excited about this. We've got here vouchers that we're giving for all of our programs. We're giving you five entries to the uh, competition for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Uh, and then you also get to join the world game, which we're going to start playing, like I said, on the 12th. Uh, and you get to then connect with all of our other um, citizens that are coming on board, uh, which is super exciting. So this is what it's all about as a citizen. Um, and then also some people decide to go for Citizen Plus, And if they want that, then they're going to get two days exponential entrepreneur. And then also uh, coming to any of my events, you're going to get a ticket for that. We've got a whole power pack. So this is basically for people that want just an extra piece. It's like the difference of economy class and business class. And a micro, all the micro degrees, the whole 12 days, uh, we give you a download. So you have all of that as well. And then we're giving a whole bunch more time, chances to win on the competition. Uh, and also 20,000 genius dollars that you get for this as well. So that's like the, that's like the plus level. Um, and then, uh, and by the way, if you're thinking, well, okay, that sounds like a lot of stuff, but probably, you know, it's very expensive. It's actually not. Like, look at this, genius citizen, all of those things work out at 13,300 but it's $90 or $9 a month. I mean, like that's for all of that. So it's pretty nuts, uh, but we actually have done that to really make sure that it's affordable for everyone. So $90 a month is basically like, you know, what, what's that? It's like two Starbucks lattes. <laughs> it's like, you know, half a meal. And you're basically getting uh, access to all of these things, including the seven day workshop we're gonna get going the six months. Um, and we've made it like super duper easy for anyone to come on board. So if, this, if you like the idea of this, you can wait until the end of the five days and do this, or come on board and join now. So we've already got the circle going. And if you want the Citizen Plus, which is all of these extras, then now you're up to more like $15,000 worth of value. Uh, and uh, that's just $290 or $29 a month. So again, and that, like, so yeah, you can go read this and see what it's all about. And then the final thing is that some of you actually want to be not just the imaginal selves, but the ones that are the self-organizing leaders of what we do. So you saw what we're doing for the mentors. They're all in there as well. This here basically is what we're doing for the mentors. I'm going to do a Q&A uh, mentor video and my Genius Entrepreneur Mastermind with all the mentors that come in. Uh, we're going to actually open up for the first time entrepreneur mentor certification. Uh, we're going to open this up for the first time in two years, uh, which allows you to then go through everyone, uh, get, a, get an actual certification that you can then train other people on all the tools on Genius U, which is like super powerful. Um, and then we've got mental listings that you already saw, mental tools, uh, and this allows you to build your own micro degrees, your own events. So all the things that you've seen me build on here on Genius U, they're all things that actually came through uh, from... Uh, like if I go to micro degrees, if you go to micro degrees and you're not yet a mentor, you'll be able to do the micro degrees. But for me, when I come to this, because I'm a mentor, I can click create and I get to choose do I want a micro degree or a certification where I can actually, you know, charge people money to be my trainers. Uh, and we've got lots and lots of different entrepreneurs and mentors who are, who are making, 
you know, a million dollars plus a year. I'm not saying everyone's going to do that, but um, we've got the highest level ones who are doing that right now. Uh, and and these, all these different micro degrees were created through the micro degree builder. So it allows you to do that. It allows you to get listed so people can find you really easily, uh, just like you saw me do here. Uh, and it allows you to actually put your products on here, your events on here as well. So if you haven't seen the events yet, there's all these different events that are taking place, which were all created by mentors that are using them to build their business as well, right? So if this is like, this is London, here we have like Gold Coast happening. Uh, and then we've got like, you know, different web events where you can do online events as well. So many different programs. And if you haven't seen this, go in and just experience it. Like all like his Mumbai Entrepreneur Social, a master trainer, that so many amazing things that are happening to support the entrepreneur movement. And of course, these are all run by our mentors as well. So if you like the idea of actually being one of our mentors, then have a look at the page uh, where you see it go through the mentor section here. Because you'll see, we give you all those tools and we also give you the ability um, to have now 100 entries in the countdown competition to Tokyo Olympics, 100,000 genius dollars. And we'll also do a personal 30 minute one-to-one -one navigation call to really help guide you. Um, and this one, the whole thing is only like $97 a month. So again, nothing that is on here is gonna break the bank. What it is gonna do is help us to really make sure we have the right citizens on board have the right mentors on board. You choose whichever level is right for you. Um, and if you're not sure, just go for the lowest level, right? Uh, and you'll see that at the bottom, if I click on this link here, it actually takes me down to give me a comparison on all three of these. And if you're wanting to know how much people actually get in value on all this, right? Then you'll actually see it up um, here where we've got videos, we've got like testimonials, we've got so many people who are doing amazing things inside our community. And you can also watch the video at the top, which tells you all about this as well. Okay, so um, uh, we'll tell you more about all this later, but you get that this is already up and running and you can already uh, like have a look at this if you'd like to. Um, I'm gonna go back to some more of the questions now. So, uh, so we've got here, Suraj has posted a whole bunch of the questions for me. So let's just go through a few of these. We've got here, uh, first of all, Jules Ellington, who says, hey Roger, when will our mainstream education system change to meet the demands of Society 5.0? No one seems to be listening. And what can we all do as businesses? Too many young people are Xbox generation. So here's the good news, Jules. Like if I share with you just what is happening out there on the education side. Uh, the first thing is many of you know that I was very involved when my kids were going to school with the Green School. And the Green School is a perfect example of the brand new School 5.0 revolution that's taking place. Green School Bali is the most beautiful school where it's all environmental. There are no wars. You know, people actually now, you know, come, look at it, it's all bamboo. People come to the school and actually, uh, as a result of that, uh, become change makers. So two of the teenagers that were here, they created something called Bye Bye Plastic Bags and, or Bye Bye Plastic. Uh, and they basically petitioned the Balinese government uh, to stop using plastic. If you look here at this thing, single use plastic, you will see that now, not that many years after they started. And they were like in their early, and they were like early teens. Have a look at this, right? This just happened this last, this, this, during this month. They have actually now made it official. No more single use plastic. Teenagers did this. And it was because they were already learning a whole new way at the green school. And there's now a new green school that's starting up in New Zealand and they're gonna start continuing to grow around the world. Um, the second thing which is happening, which is really exciting is that we have an entirely new growth in something which is called micro schools. Micro schools are where you've got schools which are actually based around teachers and instead of them being based around uh, like physical places you have to go to. So micro schools is like by far the biggest revolution that's taking place. It's amazing when you actually see just how they are growing right now. Um, and as an example of uh, like how, how much they're growing, have a look at this. This is um, a cottage class, which is effectively like a micro, it's like Airbnb, for micro schools. So if you're looking for a really great teacher uh, and you're uh, looking for support in a particular area, then you're finding all of these different uh, micro schools that people can come and join where you share a vision, choose a teacher, enroll your children. Uh, and there's no question that this is going to be the future of schooling. And it's what we're doing with Ingenious uh, U as well. So we have got something called Genius School that you can be a part of. Uh, and I highly recommend that if you are interested in the whole education system, that even if you have a look at the way that we're bringing our mentors on board, we have a genius uh, educator system, which allows anyone uh, to come in and be a part of that program as well, which is like super exciting. Um, so good news is uh, there is all this good news. Uh, next thing, we're Alan Forrestal here. How do we communicate this future vision who, uh, to a people who are losing trust in almost everything we currently have? They are the imaginal selves. Can we connect all the teachers and educators in this community to promote the genius school within the education system, or do we need to be outside all the current institutions medical included. So of course, Eileen already knows more about genius schools 
So her question is, well, how do we actually make sure we connect all of this together? So let me, let me give you already a brilliant example of this. Um, if I go ba basically back online here, and let's go have a look at someone, I'll go to Facebook, and let's go and have a look at someone like Sandy Herrera. So Sandy was with us just recently in uh, San Diego. Sandy uh, basically was in charge of the whole culture program for, uh, for Zappos. So many of you would have heard of Zappos. And what she's done is she has taken the whole concept of Genius School, and she has now brought all, she's actually got all these programs that are running inside schools with Genius Schools where she's running Genius Camps. Um, and so if I go to uh, this here, which was the uh, Sandy uh, Herrera, and um, let's go to uh, her uh, core values, uh, which is her, uh, her website, uh, got core values. Uh, and you'll see here that she already is using all of the tools like, you know, Talent Dynamics for Kids and so on. And she's already bringing it in. Here's, here's Sandy. And she's already bringing it into schools. And she's got companies that are actually supporting it. So this is Junior Schools happening right now in America. We've got the same thing happening right now. If I go to, let's say, for example, um, let's go to Facebook and I'll give you another example. This here is Patchman. Uh, I hope you, you guys are all getting, if you've never been in our community, that there's an answer to everything because there is always going to be someone in our community that's already doing whatever you're thinking of and they want to collaborate with you as well. So this is now Green School Thailand. That's what Pat's doing. Have a look at this. She's actually doing this inside already. She's already got the whole thing. Oh, that's her food. <laughs> People in Thailand like taking photos of their food. Uh, and she's already got her whole program that's running uh, inside schools. Uh, let me just see. So she's actually just, in, she's now a, a key speaker. When I, I told Pat's story, I think in one of the programs, here she is in the schools, have a look, she's got them all going. And actually these are, we're starting from a younger age as well, uh, where she's actually got them all, she's actually creating physical schools off the back of this as well, as well as her going through the whole process of, of creating uh, all these genius educators. And already the likes of people like these, they, all of these different people here are all getting involved already, which is just fantastic. Um, and it's happening all around the world. So that's the good news, right? We can link together with the actual school system. We can help them in amazing ways. Uh, and, uh, uh, and you don't have to be trying to fight the old. Uh, there's already enough conscious schools that are trying to grow. Okay, next we've got here Ajit uh, Nagpura. I'm gonna take two more and then I'm gonna come back and do a bit of a feedback with everybody. I'm gonna go through and just say hi to everyone as well. So stick on for a little bit and then we'll kind of wrap this up. So we've got here Ajit, uh, Ajit Nag, uh, Nagpura who says, what is the future of publishing industry, including media in India? Any suggestions for web advertising? So the answer to that is there's no question that we are going to be moving very quickly. Uh, there's already uh, an entire way of thinking about uh, uh, companies, which you'll see as we go into the next two videos, high touch and high tech, which is the three C model, which is how do you create something which is gonna have content, so content's important, but base it around community and then base it around commerce, so CCC, right? And it's no longer about media companies uh, being uh, like one way street where they're just giving you content. It's where the community is creating its own content. So think about where you go right now for fitness, right? You probably won't go and just read a fitness magazine. You might actually use something like Nike Run or something like Strava where you're already getting content and information, but you're also connecting and sharing with other people on there as well. Um, you know, same is happening right now with, you know, different uh, companies out there within schooling, like we just mentioned there as well. You're not just reading a schooling magazine, but you're actually getting connected in all these different ways. The advertising side as well, you'll hear in today's video. So go watch that afterwards because I talk about something called rainmaking and how do you actually create that rain which is not costing you any money at all. I talk about something called gold dust, where in the same way that we've gone out and got to a point where we have over a thousand entrepreneurs every day joining our community, we spend almost no money on advertising. Even what we've done to actually grow to close to 20,000 people for this course, we spent less than, less than a dollar per person, right? For people coming on board and being a part of this. So didn't really look to spend that much, more money, much money on it because people were finding their way to us through word of mouth. And if you have a strong enough concept or a strong enough thing that you're doing, there's certain ways to really build that word of mouth. We have lots of partners that are helping us out as well. Um, and so there's gonna be some ways you don't have to be doing that advertising, but there's no question that all of the advertising is moving. Facebook ads, Google ads will not look anything the same in 10 years time. In the same way that 10 years ago, you probably were still using yellow pages ads in the telephone directory. You don't use those anymore. And so we're not gonna be using ads in that way anymore because most of us would do voice search. 
So it's going to be much more voice recommendations or AI recommendations to us. Um, it's going to be as a result of like chatbots and actually having a conversation with someone that we trust, which is an AI, which will be then recommending things to us as well as a result of that. And it'll be very much in terms of product placements inside virtual reality or inside augmented reality, which is very, very different from what we get today. Plus, most of the advertising we respond to will be as a result of you turning on when you walk down the street all of your location-based advertising so you know how oh, this you know restaurant has got this special this uh, sale is going on down the road uh, and that's how you're gonna actually make decisions as to what you're gonna buy and where you're gonna buy it from you know you're gonna go online and you're not gonna search to say I'm looking for a particular product where can I get the cheapest you would just say hey where's a sale happening on this particular product and it would then go find it from you wherever that happens to be online that's not happening today right so that's all gonna be happening in the future um, and uh, uh, what's most important is to just know that that's where we're going. We've got Louisa, Natasha Parker, who says, what do you recommend I do um, as a Lord um, that has created, uh, if as a Lord, I've created a global meditation for family and environment, peace, love, joy, harmony. The most important thing is to know it's not about the products. Uh, it's not about the fact that you have this product about global meditation. It's about the fact that there are people out there who are your your customer. We're talking about right here about family and environment, right? So you've got people out there already in schools or through Genius U uh, or through Genius School that already are going out meeting customers every day. So for you to go and be of value to them, you know, someone like Pat who's in Thailand, if you go, hey, I've got this really great meditation program, let's trial it out, right? And I'm happy to actually give it a go to see if it works for you. And if it works well, let's then roll that out through all the Genius Schools, right? Those, those, that's the way to think about it. How can you actually add value to someone and give to someone? before you want to take. Uh, and because we have this vibrant community here, that's the way to do it. Um, you know, too many of us, we're throwing seeds, but we're throwing seeds on concrete. And we wonder why none of it grows. So whatever you're doing, if you're kind of feeling like life is tough, there's a pretty good chance it's because you're around other people who are not supporting you in the same way that our community would support you. And that's one of the biggest things that I always say, a lot of people think that success is related to how much you want success, but it's not. You can want success all you want, but if you're not surrounded by other people who want your success, you're never gonna be successful. So the key thing is not, how can I get to success? It's like a, someone trying to win at football and never getting a team. But if you go, well, wait, instead of me looking for success and thinking about how to be more successful, what I'll do is I'll go look for the people that I can help be successful, they can help me be successful, and it's way easier if you find eight people and they're all trying to get to your success and help your success to be successful than if you're just trying to do it on your own. So the key thing is success isn't how much you want to be successful, it's how much you're surrounding yourself by other people who want you to be successful and you are in the right community by being here and now it's just a matter of dropping down those seeds but doing them within fertile ground where you can then grow a whole garden and that's what we mean by a flower a flower is something that flows right and that's what we're all looking to grow so with that shared let me just share a final time my screen because i'm about to wrap it up here and what uh, i'm going to do is come back i hope everyone's found this valuable whatever's been valuable here if you want to leave a message for me drop it right now into the comments if there was a particular thing I said, or if you just want to leave a message for me, I would love to hear it as well. You can see that all the comments are still coming here as well. Um, and so we've got different people here. Yeah, Matt's talking about Bruce Lipton's fascinating. Totally agree with that. Um, you've got different people here. Gareth, you know, saying here, yay, or great, thanks. Okay, that's awesome to know. Um, and contract to the bank ended Friday. Now have time for catching up on stuff and doing new things. That's really good. <laughs> uh, there's different people in different countries as well in terms of like Dubai, where we aren't there at the moment. Or even in India, while we're in Mumbai, which is where our tech team is, we aren't everywhere else as well. So I do want to say this for everyone too. Um, I do know that if you want to step up and be one of our city leaders, uh, if you want to be you know, um, connecting up with us as one of our trainers, that's what it is to be at mentor level. You'll see that all the opportunities are down there to get connected to the things that we're doing as well, which is like super duper important. Um, so this here, by the way, I wanted to share as well. This is launching. Uh, this is our new webpage for Genius U. So this launches on the first day um, of our new seven day worldwide workshop that we're running. And what's really exciting about this is that you can see this shows you all about how you use Genie in your pocket to have superpowers. Uh, this shows you basically what we're doing in terms of how many entrepreneurs we have on our platform, you know, how many given impacts are made by B1G1 and how many we've made in the world game, how many cities we've got with members at the moment. And we're now actually starting to run events in all these different areas. Uh, and then just how Genius U can really support and help you off the back of this as well, right? So we've got everything in here. You can find all your events. You can find all the right micro degrees that you want to run. Um, and you can see all of the different mentors on here too. So this is a way for you to know that you've got all the support for yourself um, to really help you in the coming year. Our whole goal here 
is to really make sure that each of us are in, uh, in able to really ensure that we are following our own flow and at the same time supporting everyone else in their flow as well. So I think that I am going to stop my sharing now and I'm going to finish with just a uh, quick um, story. And so hopefully you're all still watching as I share the story. And the story is about uh, something which happened when I was eight years old and it was when I uh, first experienced my first flow. And I'm going to share this as a kind of like the end of this little video here so that it's a way for you to, as you go into doing the next videos, kind of take with that this story, I hope. Um, and it's, this actually happened in Papua New Guinea. And so what happened was I was eight years old. My, my younger brother, Martin, he was like a few years younger than me. I had like my sister, Elaine, who was a few years older than me. And uh, we had this whole experience of actually getting on, you know, get, jumping into a swimming pool, uh, which is our swimming pool that we had. We didn't have a lot of money. Like you know, my parents basically had kind of come out from Hong Kong and they had like these uh, jobs in, uh, uh, in uh, Leh, which is where we're living in Papua New Guinea. And, uh, and they got uh, this like this pool, right? And the pool basically was this round pool, which is above ground. And we love to jump in the pool, but the problem was that sometimes when we went on holiday in the, in the summer, we'd come back and it'd be full of leaves. And so what would normally happen is like, it was our job to clean out all the leaves. So we'd be in there trying to clean all these leaves out and get them off the bottom. And we're trying to like gingerly get in to get the leaves out because if you pick up these old leaves, they kind of fall into more leaves. So as a result, you're trying to hold the leaves as you pull them out. Uh, and I remember one of the first times that we got my brother to help out and uh, we kind of like got in gingerly. We said, okay, Martin, when you get in, like don't kind of mess up all the leaves. And he just jumped right in, right? And so of course he was messing up everything. We're like, oh, what is going on? And he starts running away and, and my sister Elaine starts running after him. And, and then I'm, I'm watching this going, I cannot believe it's gonna take so long to clean this pool. But as they start running around, I see that they're, they're not that far to run because it's a round pool. So they're running around. So I start running around as well. So all three of us are now running around. And as we're running around, we stop thinking about the leaves because there's nothing we can do. They're at the bottom, right? So we just love running after each other. And we notice if we do this, we're creating this vortex in the water. And as we create the vortex in the water, we notice the leaves are all going into the middle. And as they go in the middle, they're kind of rising up the vortex and we can actually just pick them and just fling them out. So we're flinging out these leaves. And you know, it's really interesting. Like John C. Maxwell, he has a saying about leadership. He says, he says, he says managers solve problems, leaders create momentum. So if you try and solve problems in your business, there's a good chance just like the leaf, it, make, it turns into more problems. Like if you try and like just try and fix the problem, there's more problems, more problems, more problems, right? You might find that in your life as well. Whereas if you just create this momentum, like leaders do this, you might've noticed this without even just being part of this whole five day program, there's this momentum that's picking up and it just feels good. And so when you're in that, the problems disappear. And that's what was happening to us. We we're just creating this momentum and we're flinging out these leaves and it was just the most incredible experience of flow when that's happening. But that wasn't the real experience. The real experience was what happened after all the leaves were gone. Because you think after all the leaves were gone and our whole purpose was to get rid of the leaves, we'd stop, but we didn't, we kept going. And the reason we kept going was there was this feeling that we had, that we could keep moving this to something. There, there was a sense we were getting to something bigger. And we could actually feel the pressure of the water behind us as we were continuing to run faster and faster. And as we were doing that, you know, we got this experience where, where it was almost like you were getting pushed by the flow that you were creating. Annie Lennox says this, she, she says, true flow is when you don't know if you're the one creating the flow or flow is creating you. And Annie Lennox, she was a musician where this happens in music as well. And so, and so we felt this. And then I think it was Martin who was the first who kind of like, just he just picked up his feet. And as he picked up his feet, he was still going at the same speed as us. And then my sister did the same. And, and, then, I, and then I'm looking at the two and I'm going, well, I should do this as well. So I pick up my feet too. And all three of us are now just floating at the same pace without any effort whatsoever. Now that is true flow. And we just like were laughing and we're just like lying back and just watching the trees and just the whole universe going round and round and round. And every time I've ever had an experience of true flow, that's what it's about. It's about, you can't create flow on your own. It's a team sport, right? And you're going to see this when we go through our seven days, we're actually, how do you design your team? How do you work? How do we work with each other to make this happen? It's a team sport. And I just wanted to share that because if there was one wish that I have for you, if there's one wish I had for you as you go through these five days and as, and, I really hope in the seven days and beyond with us as well, that you get to a point where you create a life which just like me in that pool, literally it's a life that sweeps you off your feet. That's what I really wish for you because every one of us can create that kind of a life. And literally it sweeps you off your feet. It, it, the flow that you create, the momentum you create is one that it just flows with you along, but it has to come from that intention 
that you're actually in this to be able to help other people to get into flow as well. So hope you have enjoyed this special midway Q and A and update. Uh, continue on. I will see you in the comments as we go through both in this group and also uh, on our um, on our videos and. Uh, do post your comments uh, in terms of what was your biggest thing from this call. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of it and connecting in as well. And we will catch up with you uh, in our next call we run and also in our worldwide workshop. See you guys all later. Bye.